Hey everybody and welcome to a new video on e-stampling art. Uh, in this particular video we're going to be opening this sketch box subscription box and I believe this is the November box. Um, so let's look and see what we got inside and then we'll make some art from it. Uh, but first let's look at the art on the outside. So this is art by uh, I'm gonna say Jill Klein. I apologize if that's incorrect. Uh, her Instagram is at the mistress moon. Feel free to follow her if you'd like her art. And this is the art that is on the front of the box. It's really beautiful. I love this moth over here. That's great. All right. So we're gonna open up this box and see what we got. Okay, so we've got our postcard of art by the November featured artist, Erin McManus. And apparently you can follow Erin on her Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Pinterest at paperraven.co. And she works in Atlanta. What, what? So here's our list of items. So I'm going to set that over here right now. So let's see what we got. Oh, so we've got a Tombro medium brush tip water brush pen. Nice. I do like Tombow products. So I definitely get use out of this. Click. Yeah. Okay. So we got that. Let's see what else we got. Ugh. Squiggly things. Ugh. Ugh. I see little tubes of something. So we got three. Ugh. So we got three little tubes of gouache. Ooh, I'm excited. Um, I've been wanting to use gouache again. Um, the last time I used gouache was actually in college, so it's been years since I've used it. Um, let's see, we've got burnt sienna. Leaf green and some yellow ochre. It's a very kind of fall colors. And these are um, Holbein. These are all three by Holbein. Tiny little gouache things. They're so cute. Look how cute they are. So, got those. Let's set those over here. All right, let's see. What else do we got? I see a sketchbook sticker. That's really funny. I like the have their little squigglies is I don't know antennas and whatnot that's really cute I'll put that on my sketchbook and then there's something wrapped up I don't know what these are little tins or ooh oh I don't want it to fall out Carindosh so these are by Carindosh Hmm. Okay. Can't really see. Kind of can see the difference when you tilt them. This one looks more blue or purple, and this one's like a green. I'm um, not exactly sure what these are. These are Karen Dosh Studio Gouache Tablets. Okay, I didn't know that such a thing existed. What else we got up in here? What we got up in here? Like this is probably the last thing. Ooh, Strathmore. Yay, Strathmore. Ooh, a little Strathmore watercolor travel pad. 140 pound, 12 sheets, three by nine, very odd size. Can make like a really cool bookmark. And it's got perforations. That's really nice. I'm excited to use this. That's thick. That's thick. Look how thick that is. Wow. Okay, so. I'm already thinking, especially with this format, I'm a bookmark fan. I can't wait to maybe make one I can use and it'd be great. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm kind of excited about this. Okay. And using gouache, which I haven't used in a while. So, and I know the thing with gouache is you can use it. It's kind of opaque. 
like a acrylic, but you can also water it down like a watercolor. Um, I've never used it in that particular style, like a watercolor. I've used it more in the opaque like uh, acrylic before. Um, so that's going to be interesting using the tablets because I've never I've never used gouache like this. I've mostly used it in tubes like this. Okay, so these are all our supplies that we have. So we've got some gouache in the tube, some gouache in tablets, and then we've got our watercolor brush um, in our beautiful watercolor travel pad. And with this very odd long shape, three by nine, then. I'm thinking probably a bookmark or something of that nature or a really you know um, panoramic landscape one of the two um, but yeah so I think I'm gonna do little sketches first to see what strikes my fancy and then we're gonna create something okay So of course the first thing I wanted to do before getting started was swatch all my materials uh, see what the colors looked like on paper and uh, also use them at you know full strength uh, just right out of the tube and also dilute them with water to see what variations of color that I can get with them as well that's always a fun process uh, color is always fun and so just to you know see what colors you're going to be working with kind of maybe gives you an idea of the piece you might want to do in this particular palette uh, the colors are very Kind of landscape looking you know with the greens and the ochre and the red it was an interesting surprise uh, to do the two tablet colors because when you kind of look at them the shade and the light you're not exactly sure what colors they are i thought at first it was like a purple blue and a green but it turns out it, the blue the pur one that looks purple was actually more of a blue and the one that looked green was actually black so that was a bit surprising they were really nice to work with. Very, very creamy, very beautiful, vibrant colors. So of course, after swatching, I started thinking about, well, what do I want to do? This particular paper format is very odd. You can do landscapes. So you might see on the left side of the screen where I did uh, two different formats, one where it was more horizontal, uh, using some sketches I did when I was at the beach this summer and using those as inspiration. And then I just decided to kind of go back to my old favorite standby, which was drawing some flowers, which I always enjoy doing. So I did that more of in a vertical format um, and just tried to do them like they were uh, trailing upward. One thing I learned uh, during Inktober this year, I started falling in love with my kneaded eraser. Most of the time, it also depends on the paper and I think the graphite that you use on how well the kneaded eraser will work. Sometimes it actually smudges as opposed to erasing and doesn't work very well. Um, I learned that the best way to use it is actually just to press it into the paper and it'll pull the graphite out. So that's the way I kind of used it mostly for Ink Inktober to kind of uh, dull down my lines to be able to ink over them and that's what I did for this piece as well. So as far as the inking I used a uh, micron pen that I haven't used before. Uh, double check to make sure that it was actually waterproof because I knew I was going to be using um, some water on this piece so I wanted to make sure that when I actually used it it wasn't going to smudge. So then I laid out all my colors in my uh, little palette and um, got out my water brush, filled that with water. Uh, one little uh, watercolor technique I learned a little bit while doing Inktober actually was putting a base of water down and then putting the color on it so it kind of bleeds out. Um, that's very fun and so I use that a lot in this piece, especially with the background, just to kind of give it that nice gradation of color. So I'm using the blue from the Karen Dosh tablet to fill in the background to give it like a blue sky kind of look with a gradation. So I go over pretty much the whole piece and leave a little bit of an outline on the outside. After I let the blue kind of dry a little bit, um, I start filling in the green of the leaves and the vines. Uh, with the light green 
and then kind of blend the light green with a little bit of the blue to get a bit of a darker green for my leaves and a little bit of my shadows. These colors worked really well and blended with water fantastically. Uh, gouache, when I first used it in college, I actually used it for a color theory class. Um, we had to get some gouache and used it for a couple of different projects. And I don't believe we ever watered it down. I think we used it straight from the tube. So at the time, I don't believe I knew that you could actually kind of give it a watercolor feel by watering it down. And so I was never really, I never really understood the difference between say gouache and acrylics with the exception of acrylics dry faster than the gouache does. Um, but yeah, after kind of Watching some videos online and reading a little bit more about gouache lately, I've been wanting to try try using it again uh, ever since then. So to get this sketch box that had some gouaches in it kind of forced me to, to use some gouache and I was kind of excited. absolutely love these little tiny Holbein tubes. I wish you could buy them. Apparently they only come in sets, which really sucks. I mean, if you don't need a lot, a little tube will go a long way for many different pieces. Uh, apparently they only come in different sets and so you can't buy the little tiny tubes by themselves as far as I know. If anybody knows any differently, feel free to let me know down in the comments where I can get the tiny little tubes because I would love to get some more of the tubes. Um, just in a, maybe a couple different colors in the whole vine. And I also had a hard time finding the tablets, the uh, Caran d'Ache little tablet pans. I don't know who sells them. Uh, maybe Sketchbox does. But uh, yeah, I could not find these online. So I'm not exactly, I can tell you exactly where to get some if you wanted some. So I didn't use the water brush for the whole piece. Um, it is a medium tip water brush, so the brush tip's a little bit bigger than for some of the little bitty parts that I wanted to get into. So for that, I pulled out a couple of little watercolor brushes uh, and used them to get into the little cracks and little nooks that I wanted to on the piece. All the colors worked really well on this paper. They all blended out really nice. I had to be careful. I'm, I'm trying to learn how, from a watercolor perspective, how much water to use, how much water not to use. Um, I'm very impatient and tend to go outside of the line and I'm learning and, and enjoying le the learning process. And uh, yeah, so I just need to be maybe a little bit more patient with using my watercolors. Um, to keep them inside the lines. So overall, I really enjoyed using these paints. I enjoyed this sketch box. Um, the materials I definitely will uh, use again. I can combine them using them with some of the watercolors that I have. But yeah, I, I always enjoyed doing flowers and it's always fun. So I, I really enjoyed working on this piece and I like the colors a lot. Well, there you have it. Um, this was a wonderful uh, sketch box. I loved working with these little Holbein gouaches. They were great. Um, these little tablets of gouache, which like I said before, I didn't even know existed, were wonderful to work with. I, I liked this Tombow water brush. I, didn't, I think this is a new thing. I don't think they had one before. Um, but yeah, this was great. I've definitely used this again in the future. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, feel free to leave any feedback below down in the comment section. And if you liked this video, feel free to also give it a nice thumbs up down below. And always, you can hit the notification bell or the subscribe button to know about new videos when they come out on my channel. You can also follow my artistic journey on Twitter or Instagram at eStampleyArt. As always, thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I uh, hope you enjoyed this unboxing and my artwork and um, I will see you guys next time. All right, bye!